guys, it's that time of the week again, back for our championship score predictions. Let's jump into it. Welcome back to another video on the channel. We've got quite a few games to go over this weekend. 11 which are coming up in the championship. Obviously, once again, we've got a Roller Rooms game which has been postponed this time against Coventry. As always, do get your score predictions in the comments down below. Get yourself entered onto the Prediction League. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and do subscribe for some regular championship content. Also, check out the Patreon. Link to that will be in the description down below. Massive thank you to everyone that has signed up to that so far. And speaking of the Prediction League, so let's take a look at the current... And speaking of the prediction leagues, and speaking of the prediction, and speaking of the prediction league, let's take a look at the current standings. Obviously, we only had a few games going on in midweek, so quite a few people getting just the one or two points, as we can see. Still, Championship Pro, who is leading the way, I managed to move up just one place in League One, thanks to picking up one point in midweek. And then this is how League Two is looking. So once again, got a lot of people who are on the verge now of picking up 100 points. So do get your score predictions down below. Without any further ado, though, let's jump into this one. So let's start out with tonight's game it's at Ewood Park it's Blackburn going up against Brentford and this has all the makings for quite an exciting game actually Blackburn have recently rediscovered their spark in their last couple of matches I think they've actually played quite well to be honest with you obviously last weekend beating Millwall a performance which pretty much came out of nowhere but we gave Tony Mowbray a bit of credit for sort of reinventing that forward line obviously with Tyrus Dolan going down the middle gave them a little bit of a different dynamic in midweek I thought they got unlucky to be honest with you not to win against Swansea I thought they were the better team in that game certainly towards the end of it they were the team that was pushing towards the winner and if either of them was going to go on to win it would have been Blackburn so yeah do seem to have a bit more of their spark about them going forward it was a lovely goal they scored as well really nice combination for that one but the thing that Brentford have to their advantage is they've actually had a decent sort of rest period obviously they weren't playing in midweek and also they weren't playing last weekend either due to their game being called off so I think they've had a eight day rest period which this season the championship is completely unheard of really so that may just play into their hands a little bit, although this Blackburn side can't quite be underestimated right now with them picking up their form slightly. Having said that, I'm just going to edge Brentford for this one, I think. I'm going to go 2-1 to the away side with FIFA going 2-0 Brentford. Blackburn very well could throw a spanner in the works, but maybe with that bit more freshness, we'll see if Brentford can put a run together from here on in. Next up then, we go to Saturday's early kickoff. We've got Luton going up against Swansea now. Once again, like we were just sort of mentioning with Swansea, on the eye test once again in their game against Blackburn, wasn't their finest performance of the season so far? Obviously, the thing that a lot of people are going to point towards is the penalties that they've been picking up lately, but they are still grinding out these results, and what I think that second promotion spot is ultimately going to be dependent on from now until the end of the season if if any of Watford, Swansea or Brentford, maybe even Reading can put together a consistent run of results because I think there has been a bit of an air of inconsistency about each of them to be completely honest with you. So we'll see going into this one. Luton last time out obviously we just outclassed by Norwich in the end. I don't think there's any shame in losing that game. It's another tough fixture that they're coming into here but Swansea still not quite the finished article at this point in time you feel like. Having said that I think they probably do get through this game. Next up for Swansea is going to be a very interesting game up against Cardiff, but they need to go into that game with a bit of good momentum, really. So I'm going to back them to win this one. I'm going to go 2-0 Swansea with FIFA also agreeing with me. Next up, we head to St. Andrews. We've got Birmingham going up against Bristol City. Now, Birmingham find themselves in a bit of an odd situation at the moment with the relegation battle. They're going to find themselves having played four more matches than Rotherham after this weekend. They currently have a three-point lead over them. So these are the sort of games and opportunities that Birmingham need to seize from now until the end of the season because they need to start making that gap bigger because I'm in no doubt that once Rotherham do start to play these games in hand that point gap is going to be chipped and chipped away at, until a point where Birmingham probably do find themselves in the relegation zone. They're going up against the Bristol City side who they themselves have got their problems at the moment. They obviously had that initial new manager bounce under Nigel Pearson but I think that more recently their problems have still been brought forward and I think that over the summer actually it, he's going to have quite the job to sort of restructure that side. We looked into their underlying numbers earlier on in the week and yeah some really alarming signs for Bristol City there but one of the things that has picked up with Bristol City lately has been their away form. It's been where their best performances under Pearson has come so far. Six goals scored in their last two away matches. Contrast that to Birmingham who have been pretty hopeless at home so far this season. Only picking up 12 points. The worst championship home record in the whole of the league at the moment. For score prediction I'm going to go for a draw in this one. Whether any side shows the ambition to go on and win this one I'm not so sure. Birmingham need to but 
I'm, not, I'm, I'm still not sold on them. I'm going to go 1-1 one, one in this game. FIFA is going to agree with me. Next up then to potentially one of the biggest games we've got going on in the championship over the weekend. It's Bournemouth going up against Barnsley. This one should be an absolute cracker. Obviously, Barnsley were in action in midweek. If anyone watched that game, it's 90 minutes to your life that you're not going to get back. A bit of a boring goal that's drawing the end against Derby County. Barnsley's last couple of matches have been pretty direct, actually. Um, it was Birmingham at the weekend before that. But you get the feeling that this one's going to be a little bit different. The way that Bournemouth are going to play, they're, look, they're going to look for those transitions to play up through midfield and to some degree I think that that could suit Barnsley a little bit we've seen how well they played against the likes of like Brentford where they were able to really get in and press their midfield this is going to be a really interesting battle in the middle of the pitch now Bournemouth have been an interesting side lately because they've played well in spells of matches but what we've not really seen from them all too much lately is them having a full 90 minutes where they've been brilliant you know I take you back to last weekend against Preston first 45 minutes I thought that Bournemouth were brilliant you know going down each flank creating space looking to get shots away they were very much looking like almost the finished article up until the halfway mark and at full and at half time they completely fell off and just allowed Preston to come onto them a little bit we need to see a full consistent 90 minute performance here from Bournemouth but oh, what which way is it going to go is the ultimate question thief is back in Bournemouth for a 2-0 I'm going to sway the other way and edge to Barnsley. I'm going to go 2-1 Barnsley in this game, but which either way, whichever way it does go, I'm expecting a good game. Next up, we then go to Cardiff up against Watford. Now, Watford, I think, are in a very good position at this point in time for automatic promotion. I realise that both Swansea and Brentford have a game in hand on them at this point in time, but in terms of consistency and level of performance, Watford are going about their business quite well at the moment, and there's still a bit of an underlying feeling that Swansea or Brentford could maybe continue to tail off a little bit, whereas Watford continue to get stronger but we'll wait and see how that actually unfolds over the next few weeks one of the real criticisms that we maybe had of Watford this season is in some of these bigger games so far this season this is when the performance levels have generally dipped a little bit I know that earlier on in the season obviously Cardiff did beat Watford and um, one of the only sides to go to Vicarage Road so far this season actually and win but what we're seeing from Cardiff is what to be expected really under Mick McCarthy so far he's got them as a bit of a regimented machine and I mean last time out was a bit of an uninspiring goal of straw against Huddersfield wasn't it but these are the sort of games where you maybe would back a McCarthy you know to win with like 15% possession or something stupid like that because you know they will let Watford have the ball for this one I mean no doubt about that Cardiff's next three games are quite interesting actually they go up against Watford Stoke and Swansea so it's going to be a big week for Cardiff in terms of their playoff hunt if they come out of those next three games with a decent sort of points return they'll leave themselves in a very good situation but should they lose each of those three games it becomes a bit of an uphill battle from there on in so for this one I'm going to go for a draw I'm going to go for a 1-1 in this game Thief is back in Cardiff I see it being a bit of a bit of a cagey one. Next up, let's then go to Derby up against Millwall. This one probably not going to be the most entertaining game of the weekend, obviously, with Derby's lack of goals recently, and Millwall, I mean, not exactly being like the entertainers of the league so far this season. It's Gary Rowett going back to Derby in this one, isn't it? So, yeah, we'll wait and see. Derby, a decent point, really, in midweek against a very informed Barnsley side. Even they might have edge that one in the second half and go on to win it but yeah their lack of goals lately has been highlighted with only one goal scored in their last four matches first goal for this one does feel quite important like it does with a lot of derby games at the moment you know if you feel like mill will get the one in quite early they just go and shut the game off from there but Millwall themselves have had a little bit of a slide recently their performance at the weekend against blackburn was quite disappointing really given the level of performances that they had been putting in up until that point i think this is probably a game where first goal goes on to win to be honest with you I'm going to edge Derby for this one. There are a few more positive shades I saw from them in midweek, you know, where Menji looked quite good, actually. He dealt with the physicality of Daryl DK going forward. He'll have a similar sort of task in his hands for this one. But, yeah, why not? I'll go one little Derby for this game. People's going to agree with me. Next up, let's then go to the Riverside. We've got Middlesbrough going up against Stoke now. It sort of feels like now's getting towards the final opportunity for either of these sides to really have a push towards the top six with the standard above them recently being so high with, like, Barnsley's unbelievable winning run, uh, Cardiff's unbeaten streak as well it feels like three points here could really go on to spur one of these sides to maybe have a similar sort of run for the rest of the season because lately I think they've both been a little bit guilty of being um, quite inconsistent obviously Middlesbrough probably still will feel quite aggrieved from their last game against Swansea Stoke you know probably feel the same with their last meeting with Swansea as well but this is very much a question of which team actually turns up for it because they've both been really tricky to put your finger on lately and go ahead and call I think that I am 
slightly edging towards Middlesbrough with them currently being a little bit of a better position. They're eight points off the playoffs at the moment, with Stoke currently being ten points off the top six. I'm going to go one nil Borough in this game. Thief is going two nil Stoke. Could very well go either way that one. Next up, let's go to the City Ground. We got Nottingham Forest going up against Reading. Now this could actually be a very good weekend for Reading here. There's the, obviously the potential for both Bournemouth and Barnsley to be dropping points if they each draw against each other. Cardiff could potentially drop points against Watford as well. So Reading have got a real chance this weekend to properly solidify their place in the top six. Going to the city ground's not going to be easy. A lot of Forest games have been incredibly low scoring lately. In fact, six of Nottingham Forest's last seven games have had one goal or less scored in them. What we've seen from Chris Hughton, especially when he does go up against these sort of top six sides, they look to nullify the opposition, whereby sometimes they do sacrifice a bit of their attacking intent. You know, we saw um, last time out Forest going up against Watford, just the one goal separating them in the end. When Bournemouth came to the city ground a few weeks ago, they completely nullified that threat, ended as a goalless draw. So it's very much going to be up to Reading here to take the game to Forest and look to break them down. But we have seen a few more positive shades from Reading recently. After that defeat to Wickham, they've had three consecutive wins in the championship. I like the way that they're integrating both Lucas Jow and Puskas into the team now. I think that those two as a combination are working quite well with each other. I think that Reading with their quality going forward probably do edge this one. I'm going to go 2-0 to the away side with Thief saying it'll be 1-0 Reading. Big opportunity for them this weekend. Next up we then go to QPR up against Huddersfield. Obviously QPR were in action in midweek. Another win for them. 1-0 against Wickham. To be honest it could have maybe been even more than that. I think that at this point in time QPR are further along in their development as a squad than Huddersfield are. I think that they've got a nice balance about their team at the moment especially since they have shifted to three at the back. I think that their forward line especially Willock Chair um, and Austin and then that midfield too of Field and Johansson gives them a really nice balance to that side and uh, it was Willock and Chair who linked up for the goal in midweek actually and yeah a lot to like about QPR at the moment with the general way that they are playing they're going up against this Huddersfield squad who I mean last time out was a not the best game in the world a goal to draw against Cardiff but they should have won that one obviously with the missed penalty but speaking of Sonogo I thought he actually had a decent debut he'll be remembered for missing the penalty but his all round play was actually fairly decent in terms of bringing others into play I think it gives Gives them a different sort of platform to play off a striker moving forward now and Huddersfield sort of in a similar situation to Birmingham whereby Rotherham will have four games in hand on them after this weekend so Huddersfield want to put themselves in a situation where even with those games in hand they're not catchable by Rotherham. It starts here but I think I would still edge towards QPR for this one. I think they've got a bit more spark about them at the moment. I'm going to go 2-1 QPR in this game, with Thief saying it'll be one on Huddersfield. And there's our last game to predict on Saturday. we got North End going up against Wickham. Now, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous for this one. I just think this is the sort of typical game that Preston have come unstuck in so far this season. We've already played Wickham twice so far, both in the league and in the cup. And in both those games, I think that Wickham have had the better of us, really. At Deepdale, it was a 2-2 draw, but we maybe got a little bit fortunate to get back into it with no goal in that one. In the FA Cup, they absolutely dominated us. It was our second team, albeit. But the major flaw at North End this season, and probably with Alex Neal, is an inability to adapt to these sides that look to play quite a direct style against us. You can see it in the pattern of results so far this season. We've struggled against the likes of Rotherham, Cardiff, Millwall, Sheffield Wednesday we lost to recently and Wickham so far this season. All the teams who look to be a little bit more direct with us when the onus is on us to actually have the ball and break teams down. We've just come unstuck one too many times so far this season. So if that familiar pattern is going to repeat itself, we could be in for another tough afternoon here. However, saying that, Wickham themselves aren't exactly on sparkling form at the moment and it would take a, a bit of a miracle for them to survive from this point onwards. <sighs> Preston should be going into this one with a positive mindset but I can't help but feel like this will be typical North End and Wickham will snatch this one. I'm going to go 2-1 Wickham and hope that I'm proven wrong in this one. FIFA's going 2-0 Preston. And then to wrap things off on Sunday, we got Sheffield Wednesday going up against Norwich. Now, if there's one thing that Sheffield Wednesday don't really want at this point in time with their confidence being absolutely rock bottom having lost their last six matches in the championship is a game against High Flyers Norwich who are absolutely tearing everyone apart who they're going up against at the moment. Norwich on this incredible winning run at the moment winning their last seven matches I think a lot of people will sort of ask the question for this one how many goals is it going to be for Norwich because I think that I mean pretty much everyone's got to be siding with them in this game in terms of a prediction realistically. The championship has thrown up some surprises over the years but 
I really can't see Wednesday getting anything from this. With the way that Norwich are playing at the moment, with that sort of swagger of their forward three, the quality of goals they're scoring, you'd expect them to have all of the ball in this one. And if, if Wednesday were going to hurt Norwich, it would be from a set piece or two coming into the box, looking to use maybe some of their physicality going forward. But apart from that, you just think Norwich are going to play them off the pitch here, don't you? I'm going to go... 3-0 Norwich in this game. FIFA's going to go for a 1-1 draw. But guys, there we have it. That will now wrap it up for my score predictions coming up this weekend. So as always, do get your guys score predictions in the comments down below. Get yourself entered onto the Prediction League. Loads of fun and really close on there at the moment, I have to say. So if you guys did go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Do subscribe as well and stick around for some regular championship content. Check out the Patreon. Link to that is linked down below. But apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.